Welcome back to Sustainable Innovation YouTube channel where we've been talking about sustainable farming practices, sustainable energy efficiency and water conservation. Today our topic is going to be on fish farming as a way of sustainable farming method. And as you always know that our fishing industry has really suffered within this region and the overfishing in this area has led to the declining in fish population in the lake. We are using this as a model to help, help us reduce the pressure on the lake while increasing food. So with this kind of innovation, they are so really important. Please, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share the link. Leave us a comment for whatever you have, you have learned in this channel. I'm your host, Anne Okello. Welcome. Along the lake. Here I have, I'm doing fingerlings. That is the main purpose of this pond. I have, I think, 11 of them functional, and uh, our capacity right now is um, is 100,000. Those are, that's the look up. We are able to produce 100,000 fingerlings per month, while our capacity is 300,000 fingerlings per month. And uh, due to some technical issues, we are not able to, to perform at our maximum efficiency. There's still a lot we need to do, because this is technology. There's still a lot we need to do, like making sure that the water is clean throughout. Uh, there are a lot of things that maybe I still require, but uh, we are not yet there. And just to let you know, is that uh, in CIA, we know we had the governor and the, we had a meeting here last week, and from the statistics, Sierra alone requires 7.6 million fingerlings a season. A season is, is six months. And Sierra is only able to produce 1.7 million fingerlings. While I am able to produce 100,000. And I'm actually one of the biggest producers. So there's a lot of capacity that people can invest in producing fingerlings. Because the lakes here, as you can see, as some people say that nowadays it's just remaining for bathing and drinking water. There's no fish. Six years when I came here, there were a lot of boats at this time. There were a lot of people pulling bota and tilapia. There were trucks coming to get tilapia and bota. That is not there. So people surely have to rely on fish farming. We don't have a choice. We just have to do it. And this bucket, this unlike chicken, unlike ngombe, which you have to look for market, here you don't look for market for fish. It's normally there. Actually, people come asking me for fish every day and actually don't have it. So there's a lot of potential that people can do. So talking of clean energy, I'm trying to use clean energy as much as possible. This water is being pumped by solar. I've adopted clean energy, that is solar pumping water. I'm actually pumping water from the lake using this panel. I have three sets of panels. I have this one, and I have a pump pumping water into this, into this pond. I have another one by the lake. I don't know whether you can see them. That other side, you can see them. Those are the, my first insulation, and I have this one here. This is just for removing that water from the ponds. So I'm actually trying to use green as much as possible so that we save our planet. And this is not enough. We still require so much more because if we can increase water, water pumping will have more fish, as I've told you. So this is just 10% of what we require. We still require much more. These other ponds I've started making, I want to do grow out fish. Because yes, I have fingerlings, but you cannot eat fingerlings. These are for people to, 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 to rear. So because I found that there's demand for, for a demand for grow out fish, so I've, I've actually just in the process, but not yet there. Because it's still like material. Why did you decide to integrate them? Yes. The reason why I decided to integrate here is because one, I wanted to use wastewater for my pond. There's a lot of water that every time we clean this pond every week. So there's a lot of wastewater. So I decided instead of it simply going back to the lake, yes, it can go to the yams and this is breakfast for my workers and for myself. So at least we get breakfast and we get lunch. Yeah, nothing goes to waste. So my, my, my waste from the fish is actually being used to produce yams. And actually yams we are using for food for, my, for, for the workers in the factory, for family and the community. We are actually making quite some money from the yams alone. For, this, for those who want to know, we are actually cleaning this pump right now. Yeah. We are using this panel, uh -huh. so using this solar yeah. to remove this water. 
then we put new water. That's what we do after every two weeks. Because so this green one is, uh, what do you call it? It's uh, waste from fish. So fish requires clean water, so we have to do this very frequently. Actually, it's required, it's possible, you should be able to do it every two days. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are not, we only able to do it after every two weeks. Yeah. And uh, now that we had again very cold season for the last few days, mm -hmm. the solar panel was not working mm -hmm. as much as we would like to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see the fish. So in every pond there is there is 120 broadening broadening tilapia. So from each pond, from each pond we are able to get around 10,000 fingerlings every every month. We send twice. Sending is removing the thing, the, the eggs. Mm -hmm. We do twice a month for every every pond. So you have a uh, ten ponds. Right now we have ten functional ponds. Ten. Yeah. But my dream is to have like hundred of them. Slowly, slowly, I'm moving towards that side because the land is available. The land is there. Yeah. Actually, for your information, I had, I had all these ponds were actually there. I had 16 ponds, but some were there. You can see that fence. Yeah. Actually, my land, actually, this water has actually come into the land. Mm -hmm. And because of the backflow of the water, I actually lost 16 ponds. So when I lost them, I decided, no, we are not going to give up. I moved actually up here. So this is just the second, this is the second part of it. The initial one was somewhere there. Yeah, so here, okay, I've, I've told you all these are tilapia. But we are trying out catfish here. So again, we are using the waste from these ponds. You see all these ponds, all these, all these ponds have water channeled into this one. So like this water is low because yesterday we removed, we did propagation. We removed the mother, mother catfish to remove their, their, their young ones. Once we remove the young ones, you put them on the hatch at that side, you are going to see. So that's why this water is low, but we are going to fill it back. Yeah, and uh, just to repeat, we are still, I'm still continuing. So all these ones I want to put now out to grow as fish, so that fish can grow. When you come, you can, I can give you fish. Right now, I don't have fish to give you. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you come after three months, yes. there'll be a lot of, plenty of tilapia and oh. catfish that I can give away. Thank you for watching this video oh. and stay tuned for the next episode under this program and under this topic on sustainable fish farming.